In this video, we will cover the first law of thermodynamics. And so when we think of the first law of thermodynamics, the first thing that comes to mind is conservation of energy. What happens to the energy when the system interacts with something else? What happens to the energy as the system moves forward in time and interactions occur within the system? What happens to the energy when the system as a whole moves? So all the contributions to the total energy can be broken down as follows. We have the total energy E, and that's equal to the kinetic energy K plus the potential energy of interaction V and the internal energy U. For simplicity, we will consider a system that does not move. So a stationary system that does not interact with external fields. And so we will ignore the interactions with magnetic fields and electric fields. And so in that case, we would have K and V both equal to zero, and a total energy is equal to the internal energy. So when we write U, it involves the total energy of the system based on our assumptions. And so usually when we talk about U, we consider U as for the system. And so in general chemistry, we, you may have seen the first law of thermodynamics written in terms of the internal energy, the heat flow, and the work. We can think of the internal energy changing infinitesimally small. In that case, you'd write du is equal to delta Q plus delta W. And so when we write D like this, we're saying that the function is a state function. And so it does not depend on what path you take, only on the final and the initial states that you know. When we write delta like this, we're saying it's called a path function. And so a path function, the value itself will change depending on what path you take. And so the heat flow and the work together are path functions and the internal energy is obtained when you include all of the heat flow and the work that occur within the system. And interestingly enough, it turns out to give the value for a state function. Now let's go into more detail on what the heat flow and the work actually are in a physical sense. So first let's look at the heat flow, Q. So a simple example is when we look at an ice cube in water. Now let's consider the ice cube as our system. If we want to consider that the water is hotter than the ice cube, temperature of the water and temperature of the ice cube we would say that the temperature of the ice cube is less than the temperature of the water, so the ice cube is colder. Now, in general, heat will flow due to a temperature difference, and that's going to transfer energy between your system and surroundings based on that temperature difference. And so since the ice cube is colder, it's going to absorb heat. And so heat flow is going to occur from the water into the ice cube. With the ice cube being our system, then the heat flow is going into our system and this is what we call an endothermic process, a process where heat is absorbed into the system. In this case, we would write that the heat flow is positive or an endothermic process and there's heat absorption going on into the system. On the other hand, let's say we redefine the system as the water. Then, since our, since our system is defined as the water, the Q for the system in this case would be negative because heat is flowing out from the water into the ice. And remember, Q negative is what we call exothermic due to release of heat or release of thermal energy. 
So when you discuss heat flow, it's very important that you specify which thing is your system and which thing is your surroundings. Because from the perspective of the ice cube, heat flow is positive. From the perspective of the water, heat flow is negative. And this is just using natural considerations of what we're used to in real life. Right? The ice cube is going to absorb heat to melt, and the water is going to release heat to cool down. That's why we like to have ice cubes in the water on a hot day. Now let's consider the work done on or by the system. So this work can be defined in more than one way. The way we're defining it is that it's work from the perspective of the system. So let's take, for example, the system as a box. And we're, we're pushing the box, right? So the, from the perspective of ourselves, if we are the surroundings, where the surroundings are doing work on the box. And so if we talk about ourselves doing work, we're exerting the effort to do negative work. If we think from the perspective of the box, then the box is receiving work, and so the work for the box is positive. So the work for the box is positive, and the work for ourselves is negative. And so now we establish a convention for chemistry in that the work done from the perspective of the system is what we're considering. Now the work that we generally want to consider for chemistry is pressure volume work. There are other kinds of work, but it's simplest to begin with work that involves expansion and compression. So let's Take an example being a balloon that contains a gas within it. And so let's say this gas expands or compresses. This work is given as follows. Now we put the negative sign in front of the work in order to establish that the work is from the perspective of the system. In terms of regular delta changes, the work for a typical process is in P delta V for simplicity. In this case, let's say the gas is expanding. With the gas being our system, if the gas expands, it's going to exert the effort to expand, and so it's going to have a negative value for the work done by the gas. And the way we can see that is the change in volume here, let's say that's actually positive, that would mean that the system is expanding. The external pressure that we apply against the gas expanding is always positive no matter what. And so this results in an overall negative quantity for the system. So we have a different system and the gas is compressing. Then we have the same expression for the work, but now the work is based on a negative change in volume. Positive value for the pressure and a negative value for the negative sign. Overall, the sign for the work is positive because the work is being done onto the gas. The work is done onto the system. So the system receives an outside effort and gains energy and together they combine to give the first law of thermodynamics. So the take home message here is that make sure you identify your system and your surroundings. That will help you identify the sign of Q versus W. So I hope this helped you guys better understand the conventions behind the first law of thermodynamics as well as the concepts behind heat flow and work and internal energy.